Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here. This is a channel where we have a lot of outboard fun. And sometimes outboard disasters, um, sometimes outboard uh, breakage, but never intentional, you understand. But uh, anyway, thanks everybody for stopping in. Um, now you may have noticed, I'm not wearing my cover hauls. My red cap cover hauls. Well, look around. It's beautiful out. Supposed to get 72, 70 ish today. That's good stuff. So I had to go put on some summer attire, some summertime attire. Is everybody done gagging? If you are, we'll continue. Um, I know it's rough to look at, but I like the summertime attire. And look, oh look, I don't even have my normal water bottle. See that? Lemon water. Got a big old lemon squeezed in my big old jug of ice water. Get my sorbic acid vitamin C. Nature providing my vitamin D. I don't know what has vitamin A and B in it, so kind of screwed there. But anyway, that's good. That's real good. And if I get my mint plants, you know, when they get a little bigger, you pick the leaf off the mint, and then you fold the leaf, and then you rub it, rub it, rub it, boom. That goes in there with that lemon water, too. Then you got lemon mint water. That's good. For summertime refreshment. Well, we're going to get back on this uh, little mercury I promised you in the last video and get a fax check done on it. So I say we quit chewing the fat and get to it. Okay, what this owner did, he brought me the old coils, but he bought these coils um, and put on there. And then he made, I think these look almost like they're made. He made these little brackets which i think that's fine i don't i don't you know they're where they're supposed to be a little bit loose in there but but uh yeah he made these little brackets and at least i'm guessing he made them i don't know that but they look functional um now one thing that he did on his other ones they grounded through the bolt that went through the screw that went through up in here i think to the block and that grounded and now what he did was he he put the ground put a ground wire under there came around and grounded it to the ground you can see this is a ground there's a ground strap right here that comes to your ground okay so i would have done this differently i would have put actual little wire clip eyes and stuff well then he ran this ground right on over to this ground which again, that should be fine. Grounded to the block, grounded to the strap, grounded to the strap, that should work. Um, and then it's two hots. And then I got my Sparky Spider hooked up. You can see it right there. All right, so we got a Sparky Spider, so let's pull it over. You should be able to see those top two. You can see we got no spark. Now on these Mercs, you've got a couple of off and on switches. You got this one right here. 
So it's in the up position. We still have no spark. But I'm pretty sure, well I am sure, that that is a kill switch as well. And I feel no spring whatsoever in that kill switch. You know, I should be able to push that in and out, I believe. And I ain't getting nothing there. I just put it in gears for whatever reason. But anyway, I'm getting nothing there. So I'm suspect of that kill switch right there. So the first thing I'm going to do... Is I'm going to find... The black and yellow wire for that kill switch. I can see it comes out of the tiller handle right down there. Um, okay, here we go. Comes right here. I don't know if you're in there. In this, in this. Being right. Yeah, you're in there. Okay, there's the black and yellow. So the first thing I'm going to do is unhook that one. And this one is going to the ground. I might have to unhook this one as well. But for right now, I'm just going to unhook this one. Make sure it ain't touching anything. And then we'll come back over and check the sparky spider. Again, these top two. Let's see if we get anything. Oh, look. We got good hot Sparky. All right, so now there is a chance it could be this ground too, or this switch. I've had these switches go bad before. So I'll have to determine which switch it is. But before I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the plugs back in. Now these are Champion L82YC. They're nice and clean as far as the electrodes and everything go. A um, little rusty on the outside. I'll clean that up on my wire bench. L82C Champion. I, normally these Mercs have the permagap types in there. But he's got these and that's what he was running so I think I'll clean them up, put them back in, we'll put it in the tank, and just see. For one thing, I'll be able to test the other kill switch by doing that if it starts. So, let me get set up, I'll be right back. Alrighty, well, I found a fuel connector, and this is the old prime deal, yep. Yeah. Let's see what we get. Make sure I'm not in gear. And slow. Turn that on. Let's see what we get.
Well, I'm starting to get my rack kind of cleaned up here. You might recognize most of these motors as stuff we went over during the winter months. There's my two Enduros. There's the Johnson 30 2005, I think it is, that I put a 89 carb flywheel and electric starting system and a charging system on. There's the beautiful Spirit. And then we have the 18 Tohatsu. God bless you. And a Suzuki 4, an Evinrude 994 stroker. And then a. I forget what year that 15 is. But we've got the old style 15 and the new style 15 right there. The, I guess you'd call it high profile, low profile that we just put that lower unit on. And I've got some more I got to move around. But for right now, you might recognize those. the next victim hmm. <laughs> all right Yamaha that broke Nine pert nine four stroke. Yep. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is check the oil because it's a four stroker. Oh, it's got plenty of oil. I'm ready to go right here. Good clean oil too. She's definitely full. So, and the oil's good and clean. So, 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 so. Um. Transom clamps are froze. Throttle, shift, feels good. Um, I don't remember the history on this motor. I know I own it. I have two of these. So I'm just going to hook some Petroleonis to it and see if it'll start. the 
vent. Put it on that one. Just squeeze it a ball. Gas going in, but a little resistance there. Now there's going to be some two-stroke fuel left in that fuel line, my hose, but that's okay. It ain't going to hurt a thing. In fact, it, it'll like it, being that this one's been sitting a while. Let's see if we get any results from that automatic choke, which I find most of them are useless. Where's the end? Okay, it's on there. Let's see. Let me get some... A little bit of lubricant on that starter. Tell you what. Okay. You'll see what I see. Or don't see. Well. Looks like we're gonna have to pull a carb and see if we can get it to clean up or something. Cause so what I'm doing is just gonna take the uh, carburetor off here or attempt to. Okay, to take these old garbage radar off. You've got a little plastic clip where your throttle linkage goes right there that just moves out of the way and you just pop it out of that plastic clip. Take off the two nuts and washers. Take off the hose where the fuel comes in like so. Alright, then you got a couple of things you're going to have to unplug for that electric primer whatnot and there's your garbage raider so we'll get that thing apart clean it up okay these uh yamaha around 2000 to 2004 they changed it in 2005 they came instead of a manual choke um, or even a, a true electric choke, they came equipped with uh, bolted right onto the carburetor top is an electrothermal device, an enrichment device, they call it. Um, and people spend a lot of money on these things uh, for this particular series of Yamaha 9915s. And they don't need to because the, the, the device is most likely working. I'm going to show you how to test it. Um, or else, the way I do it, and it's simple. But uh, the the system when it was created was garbage. It was garbage when it was new. It's garbage even after you buy the new thermal electric device. It's still garbage. That's why they changed it in 2005. But anyway, I've got a test light right here and a 9-volt battery. I've got it hooked, or yeah, I've got it hooked to the battery with a test light. And if 
this plunger, the electrothermal device, when I hook up my 12 volt power pack to this terminal right here, this plunger will push that way and it will push my test light into that lead. So this space right here is what it's going to do. It's going to push that tip of that test light into that tip of that battery, that 9 volt battery terminal. That's how slow this thing moves and it only moves about four millimeters so I'm gonna go ahead and hook this battery up now and it'll start moving it's gonna be like watching ice melt um, well if I can get this guy in there did I get it yeah I think I got it there so just keep watching the test light it's gonna be a little boring but I just want to show you that it does move it's a snail's pace Yeah, it's closing it. Keep keep just watching it. That's how slow that device moves. So in a minute it'll push the, the tip of that test light right into the battery terminal. And the light will come on. Almost there. There. The light came on. So what you're seeing is how slow <laughs> that thing moves, that plunger moves. But if you really want to test it, that's what you got to do. Now you don't have to hook up a test light. You can just get your 12 volts and set the thing a quarter of an inch away from it and hook up the two leads and you'll be able to watch it. Um, a lot of time I take a, a whatever, you know, a can, whatever I have, anything, and just set it a quarter inch away from that plumber and then plunger and then hook my two leads up and I just keep watching it and sooner or later the tip right here will touch the can or whatever I'm using. That's all the movement you're going to get out of this thing, all right? And also, when you've got it hooked up for two or three minutes, five minutes, whatever, it'll get warm to the touch. And now I'll explain the way this thing works. Um, and it don't work well. But the way it works is when this is on the carburetor, it's in the non-extended position. It's drawn up. So the engine's cold, it's in the up position or the drawn in position. It blocks a passage which forces gas, more gas, into the intake track of the carburetor. As the motor warms up, or as the flywheel starts spinning and the motor warms up, it's an electrothermal device. As the motor warms up, and the thermostat has to be in that motor or else this thing won't work correctly, as it warms up and the flywheel provides voltage to this unit, 12 volts or more, this thing, as the, like I said, in the cold starting position, the plunger's pulled in. It's always an up or the in position. As the engine warms up and the current flows from the flywheel magnet through it, it pushes down to a lean position, in other words, to the normal run position. They never worked well, but people are paying 120 bucks for these things, and they're selling them by the truckloads, and they're generally good, and you can test it just like I did. Um, and it probably still won't fix your starting, your cold starting problem. This is a, a flawed system. It was flawed the day they made it. It's still flawed. And of course, this is my opinion. 
and I am going to do what I can do with this motor and see if I can't make a decent manual choke to override this garbage. Of course, that's my opinion, but that's how you test it. Okay, I got the carb off, taken apart. Um, I sprayed it out with just old regular carb cleaner, rattle can carb cleaner, and uh, something like that there will do. Just sprayed it out, cleaned it up. Um, it didn't look real bad. Uh, I saw some signs of water in there, but it didn't look real bad. Now, with your jets and all, you're going to take your, your guitar strings or whatever you got for a wire and stick them through there. Get them clean. Okay. You got your little Fender Bullet guitar strings. And then you've got, you know, little things that don't come out. You want to take your little little wires and, and get in there, you know, and eep, 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 eep. and then I'm gonna everywhere you can stick this little wire and give it a little twist and so forth, do that. And then I'm going to uh, take my compressed air. And we're going to blow that out. Just give her a good snort everywhere you can. Ooh, look at that chunk that came out. I like that. Blow it out good anywhere you can. You were a good snort. Get my little rubber piece that I blew out. Alright, so that's about all you need there. Well, hello. I got my friend, Jade. There's Jade. Hey, baby, how you doing? I gotta give Jade a treat. Yeah, we do. We gotta give Jade a treat. Let me get one. There's some treats, Jade. You ready? Here we go, baby. Here we go. Oh, she's normally a better catch than that. This is my neighbor down the street's dog. Come here. Come here. Sit. Well, you're so pretty today. She loves to catch her toy. Can't believe she normally brings it over here and bothers me to throw it. Last one, babe. All right. Let's get back to it. Say bye, Jade. All right. So, we got this blown out. Um... Got my little needle on my float. Oops, I had it there. And I got my little jets all cleaned up. And now we'll put it back together. Put it on, see what we get. I'll be back. Something I wanted to point out when you're putting these O-rings and like this diaphragm for that uh, electrothermal fuel enrichment device. I like to take some regular old petroleum jelly and, and just kind of freshen them up, you know. And we got our little spring. Goes in there. Oh. Get in there. Get in there. If I hold it up straight, it probably help. Oh, and I had it. There it is. Okay. All right. I got my little O-ring. Got it all back together. Everything's all good, I think. 
sure all my screws are tight. There we go. Coil start ain't the best, but it is loosening up. And uh, the kill switch on the handle on the tiller don't work, but the man overboard switch does. Um, I left this gooseneck off of here. Um, This contrap shown us because I'm going to figure out some kind, or I'm going to attempt to, manual choke for this thing. Um, these stupid thermoelectric units never work. Um, and then I showed you how to test that don't go out and buy a new one because you're just wasting your money in my opinion um, it was not a good system when these motors were brand new they were cold hard starting from cold once you get them started they're generally pretty easy to start once you get them heated up but it's been a problem I've had a lot of these coming in here I have rigged a manual choke on one before but I did not like the system that I came up with so I'm gonna see if I can come up with something simpler and better I'll be back well we got the little four stroker yammy nine pert nine going but uh, I think that re coil starter spring or something needs a little attention us you understand us I speak it as Spanish and a few other things but what I'm gonna do is based on the old mercury hatch door system or the pull butterfly flap system I'm gonna see if I can't come up with some kind of manual choke for this little guy and because this motor I'm thinking is a 25 inch shaft on this thing now I haven't done any measuring or anything yet, but it seems, I mean, it, I had to actually lift it from the foot a little bit just to get it in my tank. And I've gotten 55 commercials in that tank, no problem. It's a long one, but that's of interest to me because most of these 9.9s that I come across, in fact, I have another one out there, um, they have those torque props on them they're uh, especially these real long ones because I think they were used kind of like on sailboats and stuff like that I've had one of these come in before it was real long like this and I remember it and it had changed hands a couple times and the guy when it was originally made it was electric start only and the electric starter had went and the guy was wondering if I had a recoil manual starter and I did and I swapped it for him that's all I did to it but I told him even then I said man that's a long one and uh, so I think 
that may be what this is. But anyway, um, when the silver salmon start running really good, I wouldn't mind having one of these little four-stroker 9.9s that I could put on my Bay Runner skiff and uh, put a regular prop on it. And then at idle, I'm thinking I could probably, it would probably, uh, I could dial it down to troll with it at a real good speed. That's what I'm hoping. So, um, but we'll see how we make out in the next video with coming up with some kind of manual choke. That's what I hope to do because that electrothermal unit they put on this model is not so good. So, this one's getting a little long, so as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak, and thank you for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.